Tonight on Q2, a groundbreaking new rule. Anytime you can provide patients with more options, I think that's a good thing. The Federal Trade Commission eliminates non-compete clauses, which could signal a huge shift for a number of industries, including healthcare. Plus, flames destroy a Carbon County house, sending four departments from four cities into action. And a sculpture of significance. Watching kids walk around it, see their skin change color, lay down underneath it. I want their parents to take pictures, have Henry smile. He talks about it constantly. A Wyoming father inspired by his son now giving back to the community through this massive piece of art. The MTN 530 News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Andrea Lutz. And I'm Russ Riesinger. The Federal Trade Commission has issued a new ruling eliminating non-compete clauses. It's a decision that affects around 30 million workers in the United States, including many in the healthcare industry. Tonight, Arlena Howder dives deeper into the ruling, learning of the impact it could have on Billings and Montana. That rule impacts a lot of industries, even ours here at Q2. Journalists have dealt with non-compete clauses for decades. For the healthcare industry, it'll mean a little bit more freedom for doctors and physicians in our area hospitals. It isn't common knowledge that most doctors and physicians are under some pretty rigid non-compete clauses. If you were to leave the organization, you could, you could only practice medicine if you delivered care outside of that area. So you'll see some specialists who actually end up leaving this area or the state. And so we lose a lot of great providers. Dr. Eric Arzubi of Frontier Psychiatry in Billings has been on both sides of the spectrum as an employee and an employer. When I hire people, they will tell me, say, look, I got this non-compete. I'm a little scared to leave because I don't know if I'm going to get sued, if it's going to affect me. This will no longer be the case once the FTC's ruling is put into place in August, affecting 30 million employees in America's workforce. What's going to happen, which I think is a great thing, is healthcare organizations have to compete by paying fairly and providing a great workplace culture. But it's not without pushback. The American Hospital Association is actually against removing these uh, non-compete clauses. Their argument is going to be, well, you know, it's actually good to have these in place because that way we can make sure we can retain physicians. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce has already filed a lawsuit against the FTC, alleging that they lack the power to adopt sweeping rules like the ban. I assume that the, the hospital lobbies are going to probably fight it pretty hard. And so I imagine next few months we'll be hearing more about this. The FTC estimates that banning non-competes will lead to an annual 2.7% growth in new business formation. If you do have a, a group of of docs or a doc that works in a bigger healthcare organization, there are fewer barriers now to them leaving and then starting their own thing. This is actually improving the efficiency of the marketplace because now, now there's there's competition for 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 the workforce. A workforce growing every day. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. <laughs> Tonight, the latest on a homicide investigation underway and the death of a man found shot to death in his pickup Monday night. Police say 58-year-old Randall Livingston of Billings was found dead of a gunshot wound in that truck in the middle of 15th Street West. The crime shut down multiple city blocks for several hours. As of now, no arrests have been made, but police do not believe that there's a threat to the public. A home was destroyed by fire in Carbon County. Take a look at these photos. Officials say four separate agencies responded to this fire in the East Rosebud Canyon. Unfortunately, by the time responders arrived at the house, it was fully involved. The flames did spark a wildfire on the surrounding hillside. That was quickly extinguished. No one was home at the time and no one was injured. As we look with the Stockman Bank weather cam, the big story of the day was just how warm did it get? For Billings, we started off very close to average for this time of the year in the mid-30s for the low, but 15 degrees above average by later in the afternoon. We hit 74 for a high, and the wind stayed below 20 miles per hour. Statewide, similar picture, 60s to mid-70s. The warmest readings from around Livingston off into the eastern plains and through northern Wyoming. Sheridan, you hit 76 for one of the warmer readings on the map earlier in the afternoon. Now, while we still have some fire weather concerns up in northeastern Montana, our attention is going to shift to Snow, higher elevation snow could be heavy. We'll talk about that in a few minutes with a complete forecast. 
NFL Hall of Fame wide receiver Andre Reed visited Billings this afternoon. He spent the day meeting with kids at the Boys and Girls Clubs of Yellowstone County. His hope is that sharing his personal message of perseverance and goal setting will help guide the younger generation. Our Charlie Kleps was on hand for what was a memorable experience for all involved. It's not every day that you'd get the opportunity to meet an NFL football player, but on Wednesday at the Boys and Girls Club, that's exactly what happened as former Buffalo Bills receiver Andre Reed came and shared his story and explained why places like this mean so much to him. The energy was palpable Wednesday afternoon. You know, I'm a club kid and been a club kid all my life. As Boys and Girls Club members anxiously waited to meet NFL Hall of Fame wide receiver Andre Reed. I just want to put myself in their shoes because at one point I was in their shoes. The visit means plenty to Reed as well, who relied heavily on his local Boys and Girls Club growing up and to this day attributes much of his success to that support. There's a direct correlation to what I've done, to what I'm doing now and all the in-between stuff because of being affiliated with the clubs. And that's why he goes out of his way to come back and share his story. Who likes reading? A big part of his foundation is the Read with Read program. I vowed that I'm gonna be uh, that voice for them so I can tell these kids all across the country in 50 states, I was you at one point. And I think that it can just be an encouraging time for these kiddos to see somebody who started potentially in a, a similar way that they did. Teen Services Director Juanita Sanchez knows firsthand just how important a visit from someone like Reed can be. When Andre is talking to them about his story growing up, um, they seem to relate to him in different ways. Current employee Bailey Ruff is among those that relates to Reed. It was just the feeling of it basically being home. She grew up in the clubs and Billings. I think it's really gonna challenge our minds to be like, oh, I can do this, I can do that, which is something I think kids nowadays definitely need. And that's the message Reed hopes to spread, one of support and love for those that need to hear it. We are here because we want to be here as staff because they want to make you better and want to make sure that you have a chance in life to be anything you want to be. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. In Lewistown, plans for a new housing development are moving forward on 18 acres of former lumber property. The need for more housing comes after the town was selected as the new headquarters for VACOM, a German manufacturing company. The business will bring in around 700 new jobs, and the property is a total of 173 housing units ranging from townhomes to single-family homes. Homestead Ventures purchased the property and is heading up the project. The proposal from Homestead Ventures Group uh, closely aligned with the future use of that property or kind of the desired future use. It really meets um, a broad housing need, which, um, you know, all of our surveys and everything have said that Lewistown needs housing and wants um, a diverse type of housing. So townhomes, apartments, single family, that sort of thing. The houses are expected to be done by the end of 2026, just in time for the company to finish their headquarters by 2027. A Sheridan father is doing something special to spread awareness about autism. That's right. Nick Wright fabricated a beautiful metal butterfly sculpture to be donated tomorrow at the Sheridan YMCA. Our Kelsey Boggs caught up with him to learn more about his inspiration behind the piece. It's an embodiment of a father's love, handcrafted with care to be donated to the Sheridan YMCA, honoring Henry Wright. Sheridan is coming around. When it comes to awareness and accessibility, Sheridan, Wyoming is taking steps towards improvement. There's Sensational Kids that offers uh, different therapy. And there's a new autism organization in Sheridan. It's called Reach. Great news for parents like Nick Wright, whose 10 year old son, Henry, is autistic. Henry is very, very sweet. He's got a very mechanical mind. He loves to understand the way things work and likes to see the end result. Nick recently had an idea sparked by a visit to the Sheridan YMCA. I was sitting waiting on my kids at swim lessons at the Y talking to an employee and they let me know that they are in the process of building a sensory room for autistic kids. And I was very thankful for that. He knew he had to see his idea through to honor kids like Henry and spread autism awareness. I had a CAD drawing of it and I said, I wanna build this, give it to you, just to bring awareness, and she said, we want it. Nick co-owns LJ Wright Ironworks and Design and got to work designing this beautiful butterfly. Getting it outside, watching kids walk around it, see their skin change color, 
lay down underneath it. I want their parents to take pictures, have Henry smile. He talks about it constantly. I know we're going to have to drive by it every day to check on it. He said others jumped in to help with the project, with Imperial Powder Coating and Total Concrete donating 100% of their labor and materials. I could not wait to get this back from Powder Coating and put it together. It's just the community coming together, realizing that it's important message. Uh, means a lot. Henry and his brothers assisted their dad with the project during their spring break. This plaque was the final finishing detail, quoting Henry with one of his favorite sayings, I got this. I've had lots of customers come in crying when they left about how it's touched them. Now that it's complete, a special dedication ceremony will take place on Thursday at 5.30 p.m. at the Y. Nick is eager to see the project finally come to fruition. I hope this is a symbol for many years to come and I think everybody after they read the plaque could take something away from it. It's not specific to autism really. Yeah. So it's very powerful. In Sheridan, Kelsey Boggs, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 530 News on Q2, all in the money as election season heats up. We dive into the latest fundraising numbers from candidates in the wide open Eastern Congressional House race. And later in sports, skying to new heights, a Huntley Project pole vaulter soaring towards success for the Red Devils. We'll meet her in just a bit. The MTN 530 News continues right after this.